Members, the sitting is resumed, and we will start with uh, questions to the Minister of Culture, Arts and Leisure. We will start with listed questions, and question number 12 has been withdrawn. I call Mr Easton. Question number one, Deputy Speaker. Gormel, good blast, can call you. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker, and I thank the member for his question. Sport and I recently opened the third round of active awards for sports funding programme. This programme is a lottery-funded small grants programme primarily aimed at organisations which are delivering to grassroots community-based sport. Eligible groups, including boxing clubs, can apply for grants from £1,000 to £10,000, and the closing date for applications is the 13th of April of this year. In addition, DECAL through Sport NI is currently investing £3.27 million into boxing through the Boxing Investment Programme, and so far this investment has provided boxing equipment to the, val the value of almost £170,000, which has been distributed through the IABA to 94 boxing clubs. It has committed to £2.5 million in capital investment, which will provide improved facilities for 40 boxing clubs from across the north, and it has provided funding for a club development manager who has been appointed by the IABA to work closely with clubs to improve governance and to build capacity within boxing clubs. I call Alex Easton for supplementary. Could I um, thank the Minister for answer? Um, as the Minister knows, some of the boxing clubs maybe <coughs> lack the capacity to formulate applications. Is there any help that um, the department or um, someone can actually give to advise uh, boxing clubs how to formulate uh, applications? Um, well, I, I agree with the, the sentiments of what the members are saying. I mean, a lot of the clubs, and I've visited, I would say, most of them, um, and I have visited some of the clubs in his own consistency, and they're, they're all doing great work, but their focus is on looking after children and young people. Uh, they're not there to look at due diligence and governance, although they're all perfectly willing to do that, but that's not their primary function. And that's why we ask for the money to go towards the boxing and support worker for boxing from this. So what I advise a member to do if he wants to write to me, you know, uh, I can give him details of the, the people that he needs to talk to. And I can also put him in contact with Sport NI as well to actually help, even if he, you give him the information, he can go out and give it back to the clubs. Because it's really important that they have access to this money. This isn't about those who have got the smartest people putting in the applications to get the money. This is to go where the need is. And more than enough, it's usually for groups who haven't got the capability of putting in for the applications in the first place. I call Mickey Brady. I got the uh, last concordia. I thank the Minister for answer so far. Uh, could I ask the Minister how can DECAL continue to support and assist those boxing clubs which will not receive funding in this uh, stage of the programme? What am I got? Thank the member for his question. And I recognise, as I said, the answer to Mr. Alex Eason, that uh, the boxing fraternity and boxing clubs are reliant on uh, public intervention, particularly for sport, as we all have agreed in the past, that hasn't rece received uh, funding or support uh, in the past as much as they feel the need to. So certainly um, Sport NI is working with a number of other organisations, including the Department of Social Development uh, and District Councils, to ensure that there is a partnership approach not only to the funding, but also to try and give some of the club support. I know in my own uh, example, um, certainly in Belfast City Council, they have actually came forward with their own boxing strategy to match the funding awarded through um, Sport NI. So certainly it is about making contact with your council, making contact even with MLAs and their councillors, and certainly making contact with Sport NI to ensure that those boxing clubs that need support get it. I call Pat Ramsey. Mr. Speaker, the Minister, in response to Mr. Eason, made reference to small grants. Would the Minister outline the House, is that money available for, for boxing clubs who want to purchase the fibrillators and possibly have the capacity to manage and use them as well? Well, it's primarily around um, revenue, but there are small capital grants as well. Um, and should it be boxing clubs or any other sporting organisation, they're perfectly entitled to make a, an application to Sport NI. Um, certainly, I know that some of the clubs, some of the bigger government bodies, have bought the fibrillators. Um, I mean, even in the members' own county, in, uh, at a, a, a dairy game, a player took very on well, and only for the use of the fibrillators and some you know, spectators who were professionally and medically trained were able to intervene, save the man's life. But certainly in this case, it is around 
trying to get some money in to help the, 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 the clubs, uh, sporting, small, small grants to help the sporting clubs. And for boxing, this has proved to be very successful, but I know it has been very successful for other sports as well. I call Jim Allister. Why is the Minister continuing to cling to the, dis uh, the discriminatory practice operated by Sport NI of refusing to fund clubs which are not affiliated to the IA IABA? And when will she embrace the freedom of choice of clubs as to which governing body they affiliate to? Well, this isn't the first time that this member has accused either myself or Sport and I am either being sectarian or operating discriminatory practices, all of which I completely refute. And I think the member should put it on record that he withdraws his remarks. I think they're disgraceful. The member continues to make disgraceful, unsubstantiated uh, commentary in this House during question time, and I think it needs to stop. I call Bronwyn McGahan. Gurmi, I'll get question to you. Thank the member for her question. Following agreement by the executive on the 2015-16 budget, DECAL published detailed savings delivery plans, which summarised each savings measure outlined on the impact of frontline service and addressed the potential impact on equality. It also published a high-level equality screening of its spending proposals. Overall, the Department's high-level impact assessments of its savings plans are revealed a largely neutral but with some minor negative impacts in relation to some aspects. The consultation ended on the 9th of March and officials are now considering the representations which have been made and are preparing complete and appropriate responses to them. This process is ongoing and I intend to publish a summary of representations and the Department's responses to them. Meanwhile, I can say that the equality-related representations uh, over, over concerns affecting cuts on people primarily, uh, for example, uh, cuts on people with disabilities, uh, disability arts, uh, the library service and sports are some examples, but there have been others that have been raised. I call Bronwyn McGahan for supplementary. Uh, Gourmet Yogi, I thank the Minister for her response. Can the Minister detail what are DECAL's statutory requirements under Section 75 in relation to the budget? Well, Again, my department, like every department in this executive, has uh, a, a strategy obligation to meet its Section 75 obligations. Um, and certainly our equality duties, we have a legal uh, duty to consider the likely impact on budget proposals, particularly on Section 70 groups, and make final budget decisions having given considered and due regard to competing or other um, factors. So we must evaluate the impact, particularly on Section 75 groups. Um, and certainly measures that are proposed, even within my department, have, have been there in the middle of our consultations. But our final uh, decision, um, what we need to do is ensure that any equality uh, impacts and assessments are built in to any consultation responses, and all the groups who apply will get a response. And indeed, when this exercise has been completed, we will, we will publish your responses on our website. I call Chris Little. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the, the Minister um, what, what message the Executive would have for our, our world-class artists uh, like poets Michael Longley, writers like Glenn Patterson, young actresses like Jane Wisner, who are saying that the scale and level of reductions being applied to arts in Northern Ireland are wrong, and what, if anything, she can do to help some of the organisations whose very existence seems to be threatened by those, the scale of those reductions? Well, first of all, I am saddened that we are in this situation, um, but uh, I would encourage the, the member to talk to his party leadership, to join with most other parties, if not all. Uh, mm -hmm. and we need to firmly put the blame of these cuts on our, our black grant where they belong, and that's with the Westminster government. We have lost hundreds of millions of pounds of public money, and hundreds of millions of pounds that could be spent on not only our local economy, our local infrastructure, but supporting our local indigenous economy, such as our artists and all the rest. Meanwhile, while this has gone on, I'm sure the member will know that even in his own constituency, uh, the Inside Art and the uh, Partnership have been awarded funds, and we want to make sure, as best possible, people who have never received support from government bodies and government agencies get funding and get it because they deserve it and because it's the right thing to do. So I would ask the member to join with the rest of us uh, and to convince this party that we need to firmly convince the Westminster government not to continually take money from our black grant. 
I call Ian Milne. Would uh, cast over three, question three, let the whole. Thank the member for his question. The development of cultural and creative hubs is a key element of my department's focus on the North West development and is to ensure a lasting legacy from the 2013 City of Culture year. It is also important for communities to have local access to equipment and support to improve skills in development and training to ensure that people of all ages benefit from having access to cutting-edge digital and information technology. In the current financial year, 16 hubs across the North West have been supported, including those in Castle Derg and Straban, as well as the City of Derry and others. All, all these hubs are located in areas of significant need and where, there's current, where the current provision is inadequate. Thank you, uh, Deputy Chair, our Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her answer thus far. The Minister there has recently visited the Cornerstone Creative Hub. Can she outline what support this project and that of the Seamus Heaney uh, Centre in Balahi will receive from DECAL? I uh, thank the member for supplementary question. He is right. I recently visited uh, the Cornerstone Creative Hub um, and through the North West Social and Economic Development Programme, DECAL has provided that facility uh, 30000 for a minibus for community transport and 20000 for continuation of a rural key music programme. I was very impressed with the work done by Paddy, Glasgow and all, everybody else working in that facility. It is clearly an example of when you put a small investment in a rural community, it has a wide reach, and certainly the transport has helped that. In relation to the Seamus Heaney Centre, uh, the, the member will, will be aware that we are conducting uh, an economic appraisal. Uh, certainly that appraisal is not completed, um, but when it, it is, I expect the member, along with the delegation that he brought to my office before, to come back and we can give him the outline and the outcome of that, that proposal about what we do now about having this facility in Balaki in the future. I call Leslie Cree. Thank you, Deputy Speaker, and uh, I thank the Minister for her response so far. Minister, I wonder could you advise, please, on what the total budget set for legacy issues next year, uh, what, what it actually amounts to in total across a wide range of spectrum, bearing in mind the successful London Dairy UK City of Culture? Well, as a member will be aware that and for 2013 was a budget set for the activities for that year, and that was, uh, that was supported by the entire executive. And I was delighted that the executive also supported, even though it wasn't in the original programme for a legacy programme, we felt that with such momentum was gathered up, particularly in the city, that the surrounding areas needed to have some benefits for that. So, so far, we have spent £6 million looking at the legacy. We're continuing to go around the neighbourhood renewal areas and certainly areas at risk to try and get investment and establish community groups. So certainly we haven't got an indicative figure yet for that because it's work ongoing. But certainly I'm committed to try and get money along with other partners in the government who work with DSD and others and indeed invest in I and the councils to try and make sure that expectations that have been built up, people aren't disappointed, but certainly there's an outcome, a tangible outcome for them in their areas. Moving on, I call Pam Cameron. Question number four, please. Thank the member for her question. No funding as yet has been allocated by my department or its arm's length bodies for acti activities that are, that, that are earmarked for uh, commemorations in the South Antrim. An extensive and diverse range of activities, events and initiatives exploring a decade of centenaries is being delivered by organisations including the Ulster Museum, libraries, creative learning centres, PRONI, and the wider arts sector. Many plans are still in development, but will reach out and include people and communities across. Groups and individuals within South Antrim area, as an example, could also develop ideas and proposals to match objectives of existing funding programmes, such as the Arts Council and NI Screen. Um, such programmes are not exclusively for the decade of centenaries, but proposals with the First World War themes might also address the underpinning creative TV and film production goals of these arms and bodies. The community festivals funds, operated by local councils and supported by my department, can also support events promote inclusive approaches to mark historical events in the members' own constituency. I call Pam Cameron. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker, and thank the Minister for her answer. Does, uh, can I ask her does she agree that any commemoration should recognise that those who fought and made the ultimate sacrifice were from across the religious and political divide and uh, indeed from every part of the island of Ireland? 
I certainly do, and um, I believe that the approach that the executive took uh, in 2012 around the decade of centenaries was one based on inclusivity, on respect, and on making sure that we um, provided opportunities for people to commemorate, mark, celebrate events that happened as part of decade centenaries. I, I, find, I find it uh, important to acknowledge, along with other initiatives, that the sacrifices people have made and the remembrance and commemoration around those events need to be done in an inclusive and respectful way. And I am consistent in that approach and will be consistent in that approach. And hopefully, our ALBs and other opportunities can help people, particularly in local council areas, to use the Community Festivals Fund to bring forward initiatives in their own constituencies. I call Danny Kinnahan. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. I may thank the Minister for her answer so far. The centenary of the Battle of Somme falls into the budget year 2016-2017. Has any provisional budget sum been decided to cover that run up to July 2016? Well, certainly, um, and so, sorry, before I, I go on, I, I find it really difficult to hear some members' questions because there's at least three conversations going on at the same time. Um, but certainly I know that I have approached some of the local, some of the local councils have approached me and I've worked with some of our ALBs to try and ensure that some of the events, particularly around the decade of centenaries, are celebrated, but also that if people are bringing forward ideas as early as possible, that we can try and get a funding plan and a package around some of those events. So certainly I'm, I'm, I'm committed to try and get additional money for not only the activities and the, the commemorations around 2016, but right up until 2022, to ensure that there's a legacy and that there's a funding stream well after um, this period of the mandate up until 2016. Members, could I ask for your cooperation ongoing that uh, we would ensure that both questions and answers can be heard clearly? I call Oliver McMillan. Well, Margaret, I can call you and can I thank the Minister for his response so far. Minister, what is the, the, the Creative Centenaries Initiative and how much funding has your department uh, funded? The Creative um, Centenaries Initiative um, was launched by the Nerve Centre with support from DECAL to bring information and resources about the decade of centenaries and the work of the creative sector in commemorating these events. So, for example, well, some examples looked at showcasing digital storytelling and educational resources to highlight the role the creative industries and wider cultural sector can play in exploring, uh, exploring some of these defining periods in our history. And for younger people, a comic book publication for pupils has recently been launched telling st personal stories from the Battle of, so of the Somme and the Easter Rising, and this is indeed linked very closely to the school curriculum. And early in March, the Nerve Centre and the Community Relations Council and the Heritage Lottery Fund held a creative centenaries resource fair at the Titanic Belfast. And the, I'm sure the members are aware that over 250 delegates attended this to share ide ideas about their projects. Moving on, I call Ian McRae. Question five. Thank the member for his question. Um, I can certainly confirm that the, the Northern Ireland Commonwealth Games Council intends to send a team of athletes to the Youth Games in Samoa later on this year. Sport and I is currently assisting uh, the Commonwealth Games Council to prefer, prepare a business case for investment in 2015-16 to include funding towards sending the team in September of this year. In parallel to this, I am currently considering the draft resource budget for my department and, and its ALBs. Uh, and then, as the member will be aware, the funding from Sport NI to organisations including the Northern Ireland Commonwealth Games Council will be finalised following confirmation of these budgets. But any funding provided by Sport NI to the, the, the Commonwealth Games Council is likely to cover a range of costs, including support for the running costs of the Council itself, support for both the Commonwealth Games team and indeed the Commonwealth Games youth team. I call Ian McRae. Can I welcome the, the support that, that there is within the Department and that the Minister has given to the, um, the Northern Ireland Commonwealth Games Council. The Minister may be aware that their, um, the, the Northern Ireland Commonwealth Games Council are considering uh, making a bid for the 2021 Youth Games, um, whilst not asking the Minister to commit to any financial um, 
commitment at this stage, but will the Minister um, look sympathetically at that, um, probably in conjunction with the Minister for Enterprise, Trade and Investment, um, when that comes before? Well, um, the member will be aware that I have been very consistent in my support, not only um, in terms of financial support, but certainly myself and as colleague Arlene Foster has been very supportive in terms of continued funding for these initiatives and events. And certainly the Commonwealth Games Council has received ongoing support from my department. The member will be happy that I am very soon about to uh, meet with the Commonwealth Games Council about the preparation for the 2021 bid. And I would anticipate after that meeting certainly some representation from the member and other members about how we take it forward. But we are all approaching the, this event with uh, a let's see and hopefully can do attitude to on budget. Can the Minister confirm who has the responsibility of nominating uh, competitors from the North? Well, certainly um, it has been and it will remain the case that responsibility for nominating players and competitors for any international sports competitions, but in this case we are talking about the Commonwealth Games, rests in the first instance with the governing body. Um, and the governing body may choose to nominate players for such competitions in accordance with the arrangements mutually agreed between the body and the council responsible for setting a local team to competition. So in, in the first instance, it is, a com it's, it is the government body in conjunction with the Commonwealth Games Council. I call Gordon Dunn. Question six, please. <clears throat> Thank the member for his question. The Grand Orange Lodge of Ireland and the Ulster Council of the GAA had successfully delivered uh, the objectives of this three-year strategy. However, given the current financial climate, I have to take difficult decisions across the department's budgets. And within this context, it has not been possible to extend funding for the cultural awareness strategy be beyond its original three-year lifespan. Uh, both organisations uh, involved in this programme know that this has always intended to end th on the 31st of March of this year. At the heart of all my department's work and programmes, are the core principles of tackling poverty, inequality and social exclusion. And my department's work and programmes are therefore aimed at encouraging respect, understanding and tolerance for all cultures and improving lives of communities across the North. I have encouraged both organisations to build on their respective education and outreach programmes on the levels of cooperation, respect and understanding and tolerance with, bro with bro both projects have demonstrated to date. I call Gordon Dunn for supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her answer. Does the Minister recognise the good work of the Cultural Awareness Programme with positive engagement within schools and young people, especially within the maintained sector, involving the Grand Orange Lodge and the GAA? And will she give us a commitment that she will endeavour to find funding to support the positive programme and of educating our young people? And I think, I think the members asked this the question. Difference the differences of their culture. Well, certainly, um, I mean, I'm, I'm keen to try and give support to groups, particularly when they're doing work across the community and particularly when they're doing work outside of their own comfort zones. I have flagged this up even as late as last year that I wouldn't have, given the budget, the indicative budget, that I wouldn't have had the money to continue beyond the 31st of March this year. I'm asking for an evaluation when the project ends, for an evaluation to be completed. Based on the evaluation, I would anticipate that it's going to show that a lot of good work has been done and possibly look at an opportunity to maybe do it through another government or other government programmes. But certainly I, I don't think it's fair to give any organisation a commitment that when their funding ends in one month that you're committed to find it in the next month. I can't do that. But certainly I'm hoping to use the evaluation to see whatever support I can give them in the future. I'll try my best to do that. But beyond the 31st of, 31st of March this year, the funding ends and there's nothing to replace it. I call Rosie McCorley. Um, can I ask the Minister what actions has she taken to evaluate the uh, cultural awareness strategy? Well, the member would have heard, even just in terms of prime. Primary answer. I'm looking certainly at uh, uh, an evaluation 
when the project program ends. We've had interim evaluations, uh, just looking at ways in which the two groups are, are working together, uh, as well as working independently within their own communities. So certainly, I'm looking at uh, an evaluation. Um, but I would encourage, and I did say this in, in my response to the question, I would encourage both organisations to build on the cooperation that they've gained, uh, and certainly encourage both organisations to continue from their own organisation aspects of this work. Um, but based on the, the current financial situation, it is important that we get an evaluation. And if that evaluation comes back positive, then it's there for the groups to build on in the future. But certainly, you know, that, that is a situation and a review is key, not only for this work, but for other aspects of work that we're certainly looking to see how much value they bring to the community, what added value they're bringing to the community, and then on that basis, we'll you know, decide if it's value for money and if we can find the funding in the future. I call Fergal McKinney. Deputy Speaker, can I thank the Minister? It's clear then that the money's gone, but uh, what other specific strategies does the Minister have in mind then, uh, which could be employed to build on what she describes as the other good work that has been achieved? Well, certainly there are other cultural strategies. This isn't the cult only cultural strategy within DECAL, but certainly there are other cultural strategies, particularly around celebration, around festivals and music and art. Um, the member, I don't know if he was here or not, when we answered the first question, or one of the earlier questions, particularly around the legacy of city of culture, part of that strategy has been to widen it out beyond the city to areas in the northwest. I know even as part of the cultural partnership, although it came together very late, as part of our Peace and Fire Games in 2013, those cultural partners are still working together. I know almost have came together to try and provide a strategy for festivals and activity and discussions and lectures and art and competitions. Uh, and despite the fact that they have been in this situation where they haven't received as much funding as they'd like to in the past, so those strategies are there. What I intend to do is ask the art sector, and I've already started this, to come together for an overarching strategy for the arts and culture in the same way that it receives executive support of sport. I think that's been missing for decades, to be frank. And unless you have full support of the executive, I believe the arts sector and certainly cultural practitioners won't get the support that they deserve without that robust strategy. I call Anna Lowe. Deputy Speaker, um, I'm glad to hear the Minister said that uh, this programme is going to be evaluated. I'm sure the Minister agree with me we are now multicultural uh, society and a cultural awareness programme should have included other cultures. Well, the criteria, and the members raised a similar question before, but the criteria for this one, because it was in the department as far back as 2008, uh, that the criteria for this particular um, uh, cultural awareness strategy, when I asked that the GA be included, was primarily for all Ireland groups. Now, it's not to say that groups from the minority ethnic backgrounds aren't all Ireland in complexion now, because as you know, uh, many people who have made these shores their home um, have family from all, all, in all counties across, uh, across Ireland. But certainly I would look forward to making sure that it isn't just, as I say, the two big traditional communities, that other, other communities are included for any future funding. I think that missing link is, is crucial. Um, but certainly for this uh, bout of the funding, the criteria was set that, it had, that the groups had to be all art in their complexion. And when we made the decision, they were the only two groups that actually met that assessment criteria. I call Jerry Kelly. Thank the member for his question. The Department for Social Development currently leads on the master plan uh, framework for the regeneration of Gertwood, which includes a community hub, a sports pitch, indoor sports facility, a mixed use economic units, and housing. DECAL is represented on the DSD Gertwood Project Board and is committed to working in partnership with DSD and Belfast City Council to develop the indoor sports facility, which has been agreed as part of the framework for the site. A dedicated sports facility at Gertwood has the potential to be not only a focal point for DECAL's cross-community youth sports programme as part of the t box strategy, but also acting as a catalyst for promoting social inclusion and tackling poverty in surrounding areas. Plan for the indoor sports facility is at an early stage and a dent of funding has not been secured. However, the addition of the indoor sports facility is being considered as part of the overall package, and to that end, business cases and appraisals will be adjusted and funding will be bid for accordingly. 
And that ends our period of time for listed questions. So we now move on to topical questions. And I call George Robinson. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Deputy Speaker, can I ask the Minister to give the cost to her department of the current television campaign, encouraging people to learn the Irish language? Well, certainly, I, I know it's not any more. It's, it's not any more than what it was last year. But certainly, it's a smaller campaign ad. Um, with anything probably up to £17,000, but I'll happily get the member the, the correct figures and forward them to him. Call Mr Robinson for a supplement. Thank you, Mr Depp. Um, would the Minister agree that the money used for this campaign would be better spent on, for example, keeping libraries open longer and supporting the arts from the drastic, more drastic cuts? Yeah. Well, um, the member obviously doesn't realise that language is part of the arts and cultural package and cultural awareness as well. Uh, so I believe that it is money well spent, and not only do I intend to um, continue uh, funding and supporting NIFA, I also continue to fund and support the Ulster Scots. And when it comes to languages and it comes to the arts and culture, people actually see it as a place or as a thing that can be done without. Libraries do need more money, arts and culture need more money, languages need more money, and that's the situation I'm in, and I will continue to give both due regard and support both. I call Paula Bradley. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, um, can I ask the Minister um, to outline the criteria used in the review of the library opening times? Well, the criteria um, and indeed the consultation is still ongoing, but I'll get the, the, the member the criteria and senator. I mean, the consultation I think closes in the reduction of libraries. I think it's the 18th of April, and certainly I would encourage as many people as possible to feed into that consultation because. She may be aware or she may remember that in the draft budget consultation uh, I, got, I received more responses about libraries than any other sector across and I would anticipate that when this consultation ends there will still be as many people who feel very dear about their libraries but certainly I will happily get the member the exact criterion senator. I call Paula Bradley. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for answer so far? Um, can, would the Minister, um, could she confirm, will consideration be given to those libraries situated in neighbourhood renewal areas, such as in Rathcoole and North Belfast and other parts of North Belfast, where there's considerable problems of low educational attainment? And what role does the Minister believe that libraries should play in this? Well, certainly, um, I believe that as many services as possible should be retained in neighbourhood renewal areas because they're neighbourhood renewal areas because they suffer multiple deprivation. Multiple deprivation, poor education attainment and poor health all go hand in hand. And if you remove a service particularly or reduce the service in those areas, it has a bigger impact and it's harder to reach those communities than any other. So it's as simple as trying to get as many people to use the libraries as possible. And even if that means community groups using it to have meetings or for cultural or social activities, all the better. It doesn't mean to say that people need to go to libraries just for the purposes of borrowing books. But I would certainly um, encourage the member and other members in their own constituency to feed into that consultation, and particularly in areas like Rathcoole and in my own constituency, the, at the other end of North Belfast, deprived areas need libraries. I call Nelson McCausland. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, would the Minister give us her assessment? of the um, importance of the Belfast Festival at Queen's in the cultural life of Northern Ireland. I am sure you would agree with me that it is almost unimaginable that Belfast or our capital city would not have a major arts festival. Well, um, first of all, um, I agree that, and I share the member's disappointment in terms of position that the Belfast Festival finds itself in. Um, I have not heard from the festival itself saying that they are not going to have a festival, but certainly with the support from Queen's and indeed a reduction in support from the Ulster Bank last year has actually put the festival under a lot of pressure. But the festival will come back uh, and I look forward to see uh, the scale in which the festival will come back, but it still has Arts Council support. I call Nelson McCousin. Um, would the Minister agree that there is some uncertainty or lack of transparency about the funding issues that led Queen's University to make the decision that they did, in that there was a reference to a deficit in one year, but there may seem to have been other years when there was a surplus. Um, and would you agree to uh, meet with the organisers of the festival to get to the bottom of the facts so that we are clear on what the situation is? I mean, certainly, I'm happy. I'm happy to do a meeting with festival organisers. I'm happy, as a member knows, I'm happy to do meetings with many people across a, a range of issues, particularly relating to decal. 
Uh, but, but I want to make one thing very clear. Uh, I won't have the money and don't have the budget to fund any deficit for the Belfast Festival at Queen's. I would want to get the group's hopes up. Certainly, up in I mean, last year for 1415, they received almost £240,000. And I'm sure the member will agree that it's a significant amount of public money. I call Alden McGuinness. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Deputy Speaker. And could I ask the Minister, is she aware of the palpable anger out there amongst the arts community in relation to the cuts that have been made by her department? Uh, would, has she listened to people like the eminent playwright uh, Martin Lynch, who has condemned these cuts? as unfair and disproportionate, and would the Minister agree that they are definitely unfair and disproportionate? Well, I, I do think there is a, a, a huge sense of support and solidarity within the arts sector, but the difficulty for people like Martin Lynch and Sir Kenneth Branagh and others, and Dan Gordon and many others who have made commentary in recent times is that that sense of palpable anger is shared outside other sectors. And I would encourage the member and his party to join with my party in putting the blame where it lies with the Westminster Government, who have taken hundreds of millions of pounds of public money from a block grant. What we need to do is protect our frontline services, and arts and cultural sectors, for me, are included in that. I call Alden McGuinness. Well, uh, I thank the Minister for her reply although I don't find it that satisfactory, nor would members of the arts community. But I will put the blame where the blame lies with her and with her party and with the executive who passed a bad budget. And the minister is... Has the member a, a, a question? The, minis the minister is supportive of that budget. Would the minister now withdraw her support from that budget? Well, I, I take responsibility um, for my department, and I'll stand and fall on my own sword. What I will not do, and what I'm proud of my party, uh, I'm proud of Mark McGuinness, is that when we make a decision, we try to protect those who are vulnerable and protect it as best possible. We don't pay lip service. We don't play politics with poverty. We don't play politics with disability. And we certainly, we certainly don't take the money and then go out and carp about what we did or didn't get. We go in and fight for people, and we do it all day, every day. Not just a question time at the last five minutes of it. That's pathetic. I call Tom Elliott. Uh, thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. And, uh, the Minister will be aware of the, the significant financial cuts to Disability Sport NA. Does the Minister actually accept that the effect on the disabled community will be disproportionate compared to the funding reductions in other areas of her budget? Well, I, I share the member's disappointment in terms of, I mean, there's potentially £16,000 of disability sport NI's budget, and £16,000 means an awful lot to them and goes an awful long way. However, I'm looking, as I have done in previous years, end of year, potential end of year funding and potential bids along with sport NI to try and increase that, looking through their Activate programme and their, their sports programmes, particularly for disabilities. Um, in communities and grassroots level. So, yes, I do. I mean, and the member may also be aware that the disability sports has been protected at 10% when others within the sporting community have protected or have received 11 and over 11% of a cut. So, happy to um, try and make an argument for disability sports in the future. I call Tom Elliott for supplementary. Uh, thank the Minister for that update. Uh, she did say to Mr. McGuinness in, in reply to a previous uh, question that she would do all she could to protect the vulnerable. Does she believe that the reduction to disability sport NA is actually protecting the vulnerable? Well, what I believe is, um, and I won't take any lectures from your party, I think you were the party leader. I think you were the party leader when you hitched your wagon to the Tories, so don't be lecturing me about protection. So what I intend to do is try and ensure that particularly disability sports who provide an excellent, an excellent service are, are protected as much as possible. And I will, I will make a commitment to try and get as much support from, as I can as possible, because I believe they not only provide a valuable service on behalf of government, they provide opportunities for inclusion and outreach to people who by and large face isolation and marginalisation more than any other member of this society. Paul Given is not in his place. I call Maeve McLaughlin. Um, can I ask the Minister to detail how much money was given by her department to the City of Culture? Well, certainly uh, the City of Culture received um, over £12 million, uh, I think it was £12.3 million uh, for 2013. The member may have been here when she heard me answer, responding to a previous question. 
in terms of legacy, uh, which at this stage is totalling at £6 million, and it's certainly a legacy for this city, but certainly we included areas within the North West to ensure that the benefits and indeed the outcomes that were achieved and achieved very, very well by, by Derry as part of city culture are felt by others within the surrounding areas. For You're welcome. I thank the Minister for that detail and indeed I thank the Minister for her um, investment uh, into the city and the wider region. Uh, just given the fact that the Minister has outlined the £12 million and the wider legacy issue and the fact that she had introduced a legacy plan for the city in the North West, which was additional to the Executive's financial commitment, what is, what is the entire investment uh, at this point to the city and the wider North West? Well, the investment at this stage is almost £19 million uh, when you take it into the round, and that's substantial money. But certainly, I make no apology for making that investment on behalf of my executive colleagues who make no apology either. And certainly, in terms of the legacy programme that not only has been uh, spent in the, in the city of Derry, but also we're looking at areas like Coleraine, Port Stewart, Castle Derg, Straban. Uh, we're looking at uh, areas in Limavady, Dungiven. Uh, and in on the screen. So it is really important, and it's still ongoing, and it is really important that we additionally try to make bids to ensure that those, those groups who have also received funding from other departments get additional funding to make sure that the services they're providing to people, who been, mainly who, who are marginalised, actually get a good service and a good outcome and actually feel that there's something uh, for them and it's actually meeting needs within their constituency. So it is important that we continue to make those bids. I call Danny Kinnan. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. And if I, can, I know we want to see much more money in the arts, but I can go on to a happier uh, matter and being a great fan of football. Would the Minister join me in wishing every success to Paddy McNair in his full international debut at Hampden tomorrow night? Yes, of course. Of course, yes. <laughs> I call Danny Kinnan. Thank you very much. And given the support that there was for rugby last weekend, which he also wished the whole of the team great support for tomorrow night and football to get as much support as rugby does. Absolutely, and indeed the women's team. I'm assuming, yeah, yeah, because more often than enough, we're talking about male athletes in this house, and I think the women deserve special mention as well. And should enjoy all our support. I call Cahill Washington. 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 I call I thank the member. Um, I think what he was asking me was in, in terms of the status for the scam, scam, the scam giggle. Yeah, okay. Uh, certainly, the, the member may be aware that Forshna Giggle certainly conducted a consultation into this and there was a lot of feedback. I know members of his constituency and other neighbouring constituencies fed into that. Um, so I'd be, I'd be, I'll be, happily um, I'm meeting with some of those groups, but certainly working with Forrest Nagilga to ensure that there is additional support for this programme. Can, can I remind members to provide a translation in order that all members can understand questions and answers? I call Cahill Mohashin for some of the questions. I forgot about the translation there. Uh, um, can I ask the uh, Minister further then that uh, given that uh, Skem uh, Fobo Gilga is uh, one of the most important uh, uh, deliveries uh, that Forest Nagilga uh, uh, administer, that she will bring the matter up with them and ensure that uh, that will continue to be the case? I'm, I'm happy to do that. And I thought the member was actually testing my, my <laughs> skills in Irish, and I'm hoping my uh, teachers are watching to, to actually. Uh, say that I fully understood your question and was able to respond to it appropriately, but yes, I will continue to raise that, that issue. And that is the end of questions. We have completed our topical questions uh, to the Minister of Culture, Arts and Leisure. Can I ask members to take their ease for a few moments and as the next question time commences at 2.45. <laughs>